What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Pretty Lies and Alibis. I'm Gigi. What you know, Fruit Loop? Uh, we got some nice weather outside today. It is so pretty. It's it very nice. Pretty. And I've been stuck inside reading these iCloud accounts and um, learning new terms. So I learned this term loin fire from reading Chad's erotica. <laughs> One oh, of our no. listeners said... Uh, that sounds like something you would see your doctor for. I was dead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh boy. boy. So real quick, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Two Cool T-Shirt Quilts. Almost Christmas time. Get your T-shirts ready. Turn them into a nice little quilt, blanket, pillow. Go to www.twocoolt-shirtquilts.com slash pretty lies and alibis. I'm almost finished with all my kids' little tiny T-shirts they had when they were little. I'm excited to do this. It's uh, it's getting cooler too, so uh, you yep. need a blanket to wrap need up. Need something with. to cuddle up with. So we are jumping into Lori's iCloud accounts today, and these there's so much information in these. It's definitely going to be several episodes. We've decided to keep these a little on the shorter side because it's just <clears> a lot of content, and we don't want to overwhelm you guys or us. So. There are two different iCloud accounts that they found so far of where I am. One was created in 2011, which is way before any of the cult stuff started. The other one was created on July 1st, 2019, which is 10 days before Charles was murdered. Yeah. Okay. So just in an overall sense, when they're summarizing what they found on here, it had photos of JJ and Tylee as young children Photos of Lori and Char Charles just throughout the years, their marriage, it was vacations and milestones and probably just typical stuff you would see on a mom's phone. There were some text messages they saw from the past that indicated problems in the marriage, but nothing at all that indicated Charles was abusive physically or anything like that. They saw some messages about Charles and Tylee arguing, but Lori had responded to Charles that she was having problems with Tylee too. Typical teenage stuff. Yep. I'm there, dude. <laughs> uh, Chad first popped up on this account in November, November 17th of 2018. And it was an audio file in her voice memos that was Chad giving one of his speeches or his whatever. Oh, wow. So in this recording, this is where Chad claims he's a visionary and he discovered disability after the near death experience where he fell 60 feet off a cliff. And I, you know, I, I think that dude had an undiagnosed concussion. Yeah. yeah. He had no visions. I remember this from, uh, from the book. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he, for those of you who are newer to the case, he said his spirit separated from his body during this near death experience and he had contact with deceased family members who were already in heaven. And he said this is what led him to become an author. There were a lot of messages about spiritual experiences and Lori and Chad's ability to communicate with other people on the other side of the veil while at the temple. And Lori says she can communicate with those on the other side while sitting in the celestial room. They talk about light and dark spirits in the text with the numeric score that we've seen the sheet for and dark spirits that have different names that take over bodies like Ned Schneider and Viola. How do you, how do you come up with these names? I wonder. I, I don't know, dude. Ned and Viola, he could have could have done better. Isn't Viola the name on the help? Wasn't that her name, Viola? I think that's the lady that played the lead character. Okay. I knew it was something. I knew yeah. That I, I, I love that. I need to watch that. I haven't seen that in so long. It's, yeah. My daughters love it. Like that's one of their favorite movies. So the one thing that investigators did notice while going through all these iCloud accounts is that Lori was really cautious about what she said. And mm -hmm. most of the communications was either in person or over the phone. So let's jump into some dates. Fruit Loop, take it away. Uh, you missed the one uh, point. Of, and it was a good one. Uh, Melanie Pulowski. Oh, yeah. Melanie and Alex. Melanie P. Melanie. We call her Melanie. Yeah. Uh, her and Alex would regularly text Lori and ask her to get rid of dark spirits or to inquire if someone was possessed by a dark spirit. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right, so let's so, hop into these dates. What's November seventeenth, two thousand eighteen. Lori records a speech given by Chad. 
Uh, February 15th, Alex texts Lori and said, Ned was at the temple yesterday looking for you. He thinks you're staying with me. And Lori didn't respond to that text. And we know Ned is Charles. Right. And then the jump from November to February, we're not going to say the year after every date. The speech was recorded in November, and now we're jumping to February of 2019. 19, yep. So March 2nd, a forwarded text from Lori, from Alex to Lori, from their mom, Janice. Love you too, Al. Uh, This is what she said. I do realize all of that. Realize this. Lori canceled his trip home. His truck took all his clothes, drained his bank account. If I was Charles, I would be upset and do hurtful things. So would you. Also, even if Charles cheated with hookers, your dad and I cannot ever judge. Charles has never done anything but support me and love me. I love Lori with all my heart. I will help her in any way I can. But because I've been talking to Charles with the spirit guiding me, even if he doesn't have the spirit, it has led him to not go through with a divorce and decided to turn on all the cell phones and put them back in Lori's name and move out of the house and is going to pay for Lori to move back in, no strings attached. So if that happens, just know the Lord works in mysterious ways. Sometimes things that look back, that look black and white are actually gray. I love you. I would love to talk to Lori, but I haven't heard from her. I know I'm led by the spirit in my actions. So that was, yeah. mm. What do you think about that? Well, we all know what we thought from the interviews they did and everything like that. And I mean, we really don't know everything that happened. But with that text, I mean, she's supporting Charles somewhat, saying, I understand why he's acting like this for what she's done. Right. Now, it's important to remember this is in March of 2019. Mm -hmm. So this is really early in the year. Lori really turned everybody against Charles eventually. But this is the only time of anything we found where Janice seems to be sticking up for Charles a little bit. Yeah. And saying, hey, look, he's not the bad person you say he's you know, paying for phones and moving in her into a house. So. Yep. So, I mean, he turned off all their cell phones. It looks like so good for him. Yeah, for real. I'd have done it too. Uh, <laughs> so seconds later, Alex sent another text to Lori. Ned just came by and Tylee unleashed on him. He came to my house and he went and he went there first. He ran up in a rental car uh, no response from Lori was observed. So, you know, she called. Yeah. And, and a lot of times when you see that no response, it, I think it's an indication that that was a phone conversation. I, so, I think when you see Alex using the word Ned, to me, it shows how deep he was and believed all that. Yeah. I, there's no doubt to me that Alex was super gullible and I, it's not an excuse He's a very evil man, but I think Lori knew she could manipulate him really easily. And she did to do her dirty bidding Mm -hmm. clearly with Joe Ryan with murdering Charles. And as far as we think murdering the kids, but the thing that I've always said too, is we don't exactly know everything. We assume it was Alex, but I'm curious to see where Chad's cell phone was during the, the times they think the kids were murdered. So the next day on March 3rd, This was the earliest known flight for Lori to go to Idaho. So she had met Chad in November. A few months later, she's going up to Idaho. On March the 9th, Lori texted Alex. Apparently, it is tied to Ned being gone, hopefully today or tomorrow. Now, I'm wondering if, and I haven't looked at the dates. I wonder if this is when Zulema was doing her praying for the car accident or something. I don't know, because they're saying hopefully today or tomorrow Ned's going to be gone. So on March the 10th, Alex responded, love you to have fun and get rid of Ned already. And does mom and it says shish, maybe that's a nickname for sister, like summer sister. That's kind of what it seemed to me. Do mom and shish know about Ned? Lori didn't reply. So eventually she does reply and says, it's not Ned. It's a new one. So... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> i know dude i'm telling it's, you it's like the spin of a wheel what oh. uh what who's gonna possess you today <laughs> all right <clears throat> yeah 
Uh, so March 19th through the 21st, Chad and Lori travel together from Idaho Falls to Mesa, Arizona together. And on March the 26th, Alex sent Lori a text that said, Ned is still alive, just confirmed. So yep. on, on May 5th of 2019, there are screenshots of the Malachite stone, which were similar to the rings that they had when they got married. So to me, it kind of shows they were planning to get married all the way back in May hmm. of 2019. Charles wouldn't die for two months or wouldn't be murdered for two months later. And then Tammy in October. So on okay, July, what? it's just, just a screenshot of the stone, right? Yeah, that's all it said. It was a screenshot of the Malachite stone. And I love gemstones and we go to the gem store all the time and my daughter loves them. And apparently it is, it, it blocks negative, negative energies. And it's like a protection stone. It's is poisonous, what, right? In a different form, be. right? I mean, you wouldn't want to like grind it up and put it in your mm -hmm. drink, but yeah, no, it, it, it can be poisonous. <clears throat> so on July 9th, Lori invites Alex. Now, this is two days before the murder. Charles's murder. Lori invites Alex to the house in Texas and gives him the address. At 9.03 p.m. on the 9th, Lori sent Alex a text. So, a, so the plot thickens. Call me when you can. And I think this may be when she found out the plan for this intervention with mm -hmm. Adam and Charles. The plot thickens. And at 9.50 that same night, at night, Lori texts Alex, getting sleepy, so I'm going to need you to stay close to me the next couple of days. Mel, too. And she's talking about Melanie Pulowski. She can't go to Utah. Melanie Pulowski was going to Utah for a wedding. And they are, she meant planning, but she put, they're planking some kind of intervention, but want Mel out of the way, so I'm left alone. I need to come get the stuff at your house tomorrow and secure it. Lots to do. Thank you for standing by me. It's all coming to a head this week. How do you say this name? I will be like Nephi. Nephi. I say Nephi. We Southern y'all. We just say it how we how we see it. Yeah, I say Nephi. PH is normally an F, but okay. So it will be like Nephi Nephi. I am told, and so will you with a heart emoji. So. It's interesting here because investigators noted that there were several texts between Lori and Melanie's, Melanie Pulowski, and the investigator believes that Melanie Pulowski knew about the plan to murder Charles. And it also, he also said that Melanie confides in Lori about relationship stuff and would ask Lori for guidance often as well as blessings and to look into other people's spirits to see if they were light or dark. I mean, obviously, if Melanie Pulowski is asking Lori to get rid of people that were possessed or whatever, I mean, why wouldn't she know? Right. And we, we're still waiting on some kind of charge for her in Arizona. Yep. Yep. Because I don't think she has immunity, so. <clears throat> nope. So July 9th, 2019 at 721 p.m., Lori sent Melanie Pulowski a text message indicating that she needed to talk to her ASAP. Lori added that she would call her in five minutes as she was finding out what to do. At 8 p.m., Lori sent Melanie another message telling her, you can't go tomorrow. It's a setup for both of us. Still on the phone finding out the details. Melanie agreed not to leave Lori, then stated, they have an elaborate plan. I'll call you soon. Man, Melanie then offered to take all the babies and their stuff and drive. Lori told her, you can't go at all. We both need to stay here to defend ourselves. It's coming to a head. This week will change everything. It really did, didn't it? Yeah. Yep. I wonder who she's talking to. Who's giving her information of what's coming? I would think maybe Chad. Or are you talking about with the with the with, uh, uh, with Charles and Adam coming because oh, they didn't tell her? I kind of think maybe I don't know maybe her sister. Yeah, I don't know. I think I maybe remember something sometime that that Summer was kind of in the middle of these texts, but because I don't think Lori, unless she had an his iCloud account linked to a device of hers, if she knew his password, then I guess there's a chance she could have been getting the messages as they're coming. 
Charles would have gotten an alert though that his iCloud was logged in. So I, I think maybe just somebody was telling her. Yeah, because she says somewhere, where was it? I just read it. Um, as she, well, I don't know what it was, but okay, we'll move on. July 10th at 1025 a.m., Lori sent Melanie a text message. I think so, but I think they're moving their plans to tomorrow oh. since they will s still try to get rid of you, Melanie replied. Melanie replied, I wish there was a way to somehow be at the wedding, but I know this is more important. Lori responded, I know, baby, I'm so sorry. This is important to your mission, even though I know it's hard to just sit there. Hey, we have breaking news. Alex uh -oh. Murdoch was just arrested on charges related to Gloria Satterfield's case. The housekeeper. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. The plot thickens. <laughs> Oh, yes, wow. Uh, Holy moly. Uh-oh. Whoa. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no that's cool. Um, so if Lori believed what she was selling, why was she so terrified to be confronted about her beliefs? That's, exactly. I mean, because if I really believe something, religious or not, and somebody's going to confront me about it, I'm going to stand my ground. Yeah. She. The reason is, she may have believed all this stuff, but in the back of her mind, she knew it was hogwash. Mm. And she, I think she was embarrassed by it. She might've been embarrassed to have her mom, Charles, her brother, sit her down and say, girl, what are you doing? Yeah. Yep. Yep. And it seems like she's always got to be around somebody. She's never by herself, right? No, that's a, that's a really, I mean, it was a lot of times Alex, yep. but I mean, not that I would use anybody that way, but if I had somebody who I snapped a finger and they did everything for me, it would be kind of intoxicating. Yeah. I just haven't found that person yet. Fruit Loop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on I now. Some sweet tea. <laughs> um, so July 10th, Lori texts Melanie Pulowski saying that Alex was there and Charles said he would be coming over in the morning. No messages were sent during or immediately after Charles's murder. That we know of, right? Uh, not that we know of now they could have been been calls 60 but... burner phones. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. So July 11, 2019, the day Charles was murdered. Um, July 13th at 4 9 PM, Melanie texts Lori, Adam just called Brandon and told him I'll murder Charles. He put it on speaker for me to hear. Can you talk please? I think Brandon found out earlier. He seemed in shock a few hours ago, and then Adam and Brandon tried to use the situation to their advantage. He cornered me and Adam and put it on speaker to tell me. Then Brandon said, do you still believe everything you believe? Yeah, good for Brandon, because what he's doing is what we all would do is show the obvious and say, hey, look, somebody's dead now. Somebody's been murdered. Do, yeah. Is this still just as important as it was to you? I mean, it seemed like Melanie and Brandon had a really normal i mean we don't know the ins and outs but didn't seem like there was much happening in their marriage until Lori came in with all this mumbo jumbo stuff yep so to end that that stuff it, she says brandon is with the moving truck at my new address moving things i'm at the house with the kids and then Lori responded call me yeah so Melanie sent another text message to Lori that same day at 519 PM and asked, does Tylee have a phone or a way to contact Brandon or Adam? And Lori responded, nope, I still have it, which makes me think Lori took her phone shortly after Charles was murdered. Mm -hmm. That's, that's crazy. But why would Lori take her phone? Maybe she, she knew, she knew Tylee knew the truth. Right. And I think maybe she was afraid because remember yesterday we talked about in Adam's interview, he thought they could get Tylee to break mm -hmm. if they could get her alone. And maybe Lori knew that about Tylee. Yep. That, that yeah. if somebody called her and she wasn't around, Tylee might not be able to hold up what she had been, what I believe is coached. Yeah. To say you, about remember, you remember when Colby got to the house that evening, when Tylee answered the door, she broke down crying. Yes. She, yeah. So she knew. Poor thing. I, I really, if you watch her body language, um, she was very nervous as anybody would be adult or teenager sitting in a, an interrogation room, essentially. Yeah. But 
there's that whole added what we know, which is this was a setup and Tylee was 16, not, not a dumb person and knew what was happening and knew this was not what, I mean, you know, I don't know that I necessarily doubt that she came out with the bat. If she heard yelling, she may have grabbed that bat. I don't know, but we all know it didn't go down the way they said. So well, look at, I mean, look at Melanie's statement there. Does Tylee have a phone or a way to contact Brandon or Adam? Why right. would she ask that question right, if exactly. she didn't know what Tylee could tell him? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, exactly. They, that is such a, a direct question. Mm -hmm. Like, oh my gosh, they're saying murder. Can it's they get tell. to Tylee? It's a tell of what Melanie Pulowski knows. It really is. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. So on July 13th, now they noted that there's not a ton of communication between Lori and Alex after the murder, but they were also together getting ready to move up to Idaho. So mm -hmm. probably didn't have a need to text. So on July 13th, text between Chad and she used the nickname Bubby in her phone and, <laughs> and Lori. The text is in regards to a restraining order that Brandon has taken out. And Chad says he can't just do that. Just like he can't get a restraining order against you. The mediator would make that clear. I think mediator he's referring to, I think they tried to go to a mediator to mm -hmm. settle the divorce first. And he goes on to say, you and Al didn't have any charges against you. And I think he's talking about Charles's murder. Chad said he would talk to someone whose husband was a police officer. He said that this person was dark. And Chad asked Lori if Brandon knew about Charles's text message, which I'm thinking of the ones about the intervention. And investigator found screenshots of the text between Charles and Adam on another iCloud account on Lori's computer. So somebody was supplying her with those screenshots. I tend to think maybe her sister. Yep. So Lori asked Chad to clean Melanie's house of any bad spirits. And Chad said he was working on it, but he had to break down the bad spirits that Brandon created. He also said he was able to detect three listening devices in her new house and told Lori where they were. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. He detected them through his, his veil thing. Look, I'm just going to be honest <laughs> with you. And I ain't trying to talk bad about the guy. But Chad's a moron. Like everything he says, he's like, oh, you can't do that. Or you can't do that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like he doesn't know. Oh, like, yeah. He's it's making comments about stuff that he doesn't even know. He doesn't no. know what Brandon has against Melanie Pulowski for a restraining order. Nope. But he 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 can see beyond the veil. So it reminds me, remember Johnny Carson used to do that thing where he would put that card on his head? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I forget the name. But anyway, so Chad texted Lori at 10.08 that same night. I'm headed to bed so I can come snuggle tightly against you. By the way, somebody asked me if I was going to do a dramatic reading of the erotica, and that is a hard pass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe interpretive dance later he says i'm heading to bed so i can come snuggle tightly against you i adore you you are truly my best friend on earth and throughout eternity see you in a minute and there were three butterfly lips and fire emojis no uh -oh. so on july 14th alex texts Lori that he is on a plane to california and Lori tells him to have a relaxing vacation and that's when he went to columbia shortly after charles was murdered Ah. Uh. So July 14th is also when Chad sends Lori his erotica story uh, three days after Charles was murdered. Um, and we talked about some of those comments. Loin fire. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, the contact name on this was Melanie too, but the number was traced to Chad and Tammy. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the day they started using uh, this phone number to communicate. The contact was added on October 28th. Can I just inject here? I think my grandma, who's an 87-year-old little Southern lady, could write spicier erotica than Chad. Just going <laughs> to put that out there. All right. Uh, July 15th and 16th. Uh, again, we're still in 2019. Lori travels to Houston with someone. So that one's redacted. Mm -hmm. July 15th, Lori texts Alex. The key is inside, up on the dash, along with a ticket. And there's $100 cash in the glove compartment and a full tank of gas. Two lip emojis. It's at Houston Hobby Airport. 
in the blue garage on the third floor aisle D in the middle row. You can't miss it. This car is thought to be one. This is the one Charles. This was his truck at the airport. So now we see Alex is the one who got the car. Mm -hmm. Took his truck. Yep. See, that's what I love about this document dump is we're starting to get little pieces to the puzzle that make a lot more sense. Yeah. There's so much in this dump. I, I mean, eventually when Chad goes to trial, we'll see what Idaho has. Cannot imagine what they have up there. Yeah. Related to these murders. So obviously she had to go to the airport to find the truck to start with. Yeah. But to she, exactly flew, where it was. um, see, remember that same day though, Lori traveled to Houston. So she was at the airport. Yeah. So she went yep. and found out where it was. Mm -hmm. Then text Alex. Here's where I found it. Yeah. So JJ and Tylee stay with someone named Angela, who is a confidant of Lori's. During this time, there are several texts between Lori and Angela. In numerous texts between Lori and Chad, they talk of fighting off evil spirits, attaching themselves to others. Chad would score people for Lori, and we know that he would give the rating. Uh, so July 18th at 6.55 a.m., Lori texts Chad, I just got the letter from the insurance company saying that I am not the beneficiary. It's a spear through my heart. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Who do you think he changed it to? Brandon or probably Kay? He left nothing for JJ. And Chad says, wow, that's terrible. There is no way to find out, question mark. Lori says, I might be able to see when I can get his computer on Sunday. I could check the email sent to the insurance company. It will show change of beneficiary. He must have done it recently. And Chad yeah. says, it seems you would have had to agree to the change. This is where I'm telling you he's a moron. You would have to agree to the change. Maybe your name was forged. You should have a good paper trail to prove it. I love you. This is terrible, but it is probably another step in bringing down the gad gadgetons i don't even know especially brandon yeah it's it's g-a-d-i-a-n-t-o-n-s and a friend of mine thanks to kathy she i tweeted something out about it and she texted me and said in the book of mormon these are a band of robbers that were covert led by someone pretending to be good there you go but see i mean he's he doesn't know like he spews things out of his mouth that he doesn't even know. I don't yeah, I have mean, to tell anybody who my beneficiary is. Exactly. And that's the whole point is you can change it when you figure out your, your wife's 50 shades of cray and probably going to kill you for it. Yeah. And that's what he was smart enough to do. And he didn't leave anything for JJ. Actually, he left everything for JJ because he assumed Kay mm -hmm. would be the yeah. one ending up getting him back and raising him. Yeah. So good for Charles. Like he had it. Man, he, he knew what was up. Bless his heart. He knew they were coming for him. And to me, it speaks a lot about his his role as a father to make sure that JJ had that money in a place where he knew it would be be given to him. Yeah. So, so I wonder if this is, and I know we're getting ready to stop because we're done with this uh, episode, but I wonder, like, she's getting his computer on Sunday. So that means she got his possessions. I, I don't know how it went. I know that the investigators, uh, the day he was murdered, I believe they went to the hotel and got everything that was in the room. Yeah. And they did get a laptop, I know, and like an iPad and a couple of iPads. So maybe they were done getting everything. And I don't know. Maybe she thought she was going to get his computer and didn't. Yeah. We just don't know. So we're just going to finish up this text thing and then we're going to end it for today. And Lori says, Nope, he can change it anytime he wants. He's the agent, and anyone can change their beneficiary at any time with their own signature. I'm thinking it must be K. Chad says, hmm, it will be interesting if it got changed after he had two bullets in his chest. Holy moly. I, I mean, who says that? A murderer. Chad yeah. Um, and uh, you know what's interesting is in these documents early on, well, not early on in the investigation, once the whole picture became clear to investigators, Chad was listed on the indictment for first degree murder. But remember, they didn't charge him, but the case is still open. So yeah. maybe that's coming. Lori says, I don't think it could have. You can't change it after the death date. They would review that. 
Chad says, yes, I'm thinking Kay as well. She's probably freaking out that you got those computers. I'm going to shower and give you a blessing. I'm eager to get home so we can talk. It really will be okay, my love. You're so wonderful. So at 12, well, 19 p.m. Hold on. I will say this. <laughs> Kay ain't freaking out. Oh. Golly. Yeah, they... Mm. Kay would tear him up. I would pay to see oh. Kay fight between Chad and Kay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm game. Let's don't even I'm send him there. to trial. Let's just put a cage around him and <laughs> Kay and sell tickets. Yeah. Let's get a ladder match, like a wrestling match between Kay and Chad. There we go. So Lori says... um, at 1219 that day, Lori texts, so I talked to the insurance company. He changed it in March. So it was probably Ned before we got rid of him. Oh, my goodness. Here we uh, go. They can't tell me who to, of course, but it's done. I'll still get the four, $4,000 a month from Social Security. So that's where we're going to stop for today. That kind of covers um, what was going on in text messages as far as we can see before and after Charles was murdered. It's just sickening. And, and the, like I totally get like JJ needed taken care of. Yeah. It's sickening to know she's getting that money after she killed Charles mm -hmm. and she's using that money, which she probably didn't spend anything on JJ. No, uh, I mean, he wasn't getting his medications. And and yeah. if you look at the house in Texas and the house in Idaho, it looked like they were drifters. There were, mm -hmm. I mean, there was, her stuff was hung up nice and neat, I might add. All of her outfits in a row. Tylee was living out of bags and suitcases. Nothing but mattresses on the floor. No furniture in the living room. So she wasn't, she was way past taking care of those kids and are yeah. at least making the house they were in a home. Yeah. It was all focused on this cult money murder and the kids eventually fell victim to that. It's just yeah. insane, but it really, these people are whack. They're wackadoodle. Yeah. And I try not to make fun of people, but I'm sorry. These people yeah. are crazy. Yeah. All right. So we are going to end it here. We will see you guys soon. We're going to pick right back up where we left off here. There are several episodes of iCloud content for us to go to. But in the meantime, you guys have a good afternoon.